Welcome to Procrast Creation. Very glad that you joined us today. Today, I am excited about my $2 fun. Hey, I got a $2 fun. I went to um, one of my local thrift shops today and found this chair. Like I said, it's $2, has a little inlay of fabric. So, never worked on a dining room chair. I've been trying to teach myself how to upholster furniture. I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos, so I may have watched some of yours. Um, but I'm welcoming all new Procrast creators. So if you like what you see today or interested in what you see today or wanna watch one of my other videos, like I said, the rocking chair video is out, please subscribe, please subscribe, please subscribe. All right, um, so today I am going to paint this chair. I am going to use this um, chalked ultra matte paint. It's a linen white color. Um, haven't quite decided what I'm gonna do with the inside of it yet. I'm sticking with a color theme, so a lot of my chair is gonna have the same kind of theme for now um, until I'm done decorating my house. And then we'll move on to some other colors. But for now, I hope you enjoy what you see here. Please leave any comments. Please remember I am not a professional. I do this on the side. I am a professional in that I work every day on another job and I go to school, but I'm not a professional when it comes to reupholstering furniture or decorating or any of the things that you may see me do. But it's something, again, that relaxes me and something that I like to do. So I hope you enjoy it and I hope you learn something from it. Okay, on to this $2 fine. As you can see, I am removing the first piece of fabric that I found. Um, along with the trim. Trim is normally put on with some hot glue. So um, trying to find the edge of that was a little difficult at first, but I finally found it and was able to pull that trim up, which allowed me to easily pull up the piece of fabric um, that of course it was attached to. Um, this piece was uh, attached to the chair with staples. Uh, the pieces underneath, you'll see that they were or have been on the chair for a while and they have they were attached with tacks. So not only did I find fabric, but I found thin layers of foam and then more fabric. So um, as you can see, we're now to our third layer of fabric. So uh, I believe this was most likely the original layer of fabric. So this chair has... Um, gone through a few life changes uh, and as you can see the tacks are got more and more difficult to find and well not find but to to find a place to pull them out they have been in there for quite some time so anyways we get to the next layer which is a layer of cotton which was nasty so you can see how i'm barely touching it with my fingers as well as a piece of burlap which was covering um, some metal bands I don't know what the technical name for those are but as you can see I had to even get that piece of fabric off by removing the tacks that was holding it this is uh, the chair all the way deconstructed um, so as you can see it's an old chair so I took that um, chair painted it with the chalk paint, um, put two layers of paint on it, uh, then prepared for the burlap. If you haven't used burlap before, if you find a string in the bur burlap, just one string where you would like to cut, because burlap is hard to make a straight cut unless you have a way. So you saw my finger just go down. When you pull that one string out, it gives you a guide to be able to cut the burlap in a straight line. So um, just a tip for you, if you're using burlap, find measure off where you want, whatever string is there, pull that string out, and then it gives you that guide that you can use um, to make a straight cut for your piece of fabric. So I thought I'd just pass that on. I, I learned that last year when I was working with burlap and making pillows and things of that nature so thought I'd share that little tip with you I hope it is useful so as you can see um, it took me a, a little bit to cut this piece of burlap um, 
and of course you're getting just snippets of my process but from there I the chair was already painted so then I am very much into the distressed look so as you can see I am now sanding the chair I use I think I used a 120 maybe an 80 um, piece of sand a uh, sand paper it wasn't really paper it's a little square thing but so I can get a better grip but as you can see I'm just working the areas that I really want it distressed you know of course the corners things that it's going to show that where like um, it's been that way for a while so uh, and as you can see my outfits change several times in this video um, as you will see coming up here so as you can see, I'm doing this bit by bit, piece by piece. When I get 10 or 15 minutes, I'm going through and um, trying to do what I can either before I go to work or um, when I get home from work, which is I normally only have a few minutes. So anyway, so um, as you can see now, I am putting the burlap on the chair um, using this pneumatic staple gun. Um which I had to end up cutting the sound. As you can see, off to the side is my little compressor. So um, after I did that, I added a piece of foam, which I also stapled down to um, the chair on top of the burlap. Um, again, I'm just adding the layers uh, that I took off back to the chair. So uh, put a few staples in that. I didn't staple it all the way around, but just trying to make sure I had it tacked on pretty good. Um, from there, I used cotton, and I think I talked about this cotton when I talked about the tools. Um, cotton, This kind of cotton was hard for me to find in stores, but I was able to find it online. If you want more information about that, leave me a comment below, and I will definitely um, tell you where I, I buy that cotton from. Um, it's a very it's a very good price when you buy it online so just thought I'd share that as well so again I'm just kind of finagling the cotton around making sure that every place is filled and it's all even so that when you put that fabric on top um, it's a consistent flow so I put this uh, piece of fabric just to kind of keep the cotton in place but I end up ended up actually putting another piece of cotton on top just giving it that extra cushiony feel um so what i did too which is not shown in this video is that first green piece of fabric that i pulled off i used that as my guide to cut the new fabric that i'm putting on the new fabric that you see right there and so um i used that first green piece to and I cut about an inch around so that I, because I knew I wanted a little bit more cushion within the seat. So as you can see here, I'm adding the trim. I'm trying to cut the corners in 45 degree angles. And to be honest, I'm going to tell you my first corner I didn't like. So after I finished this video, I pulled that corner back up. Not really sure. I, I think it matches, but I'm not really sure I like this trim for this chair. So I may be changing it in the future. But for the sake of this video, this is what it looks like. And it is still cute. Um, so just me, again, going through cutting that piece of trim, getting it all lined up the way I thought I wanted it. And then um, using some hot glue to then not only get that corner in place that I've cut in that 45 degree angle but to of course do the whole strip where it is also in place so as you can see the chair came together pretty good so here's the hot glue process um, and again that's just a simple laying the glue down and putting making sure your trim is where you want it to be which is how I messed up that first corner and needed to go back and pull it up and fix it but Anyways, this is the chair, and it is beautiful. Um, like I said, I did go back because this is a learning process for me. So as I learn and grow and fix things, you know, I change them to 
meet the chair. But as you can see, it turned out wonderful. If you love this chair or love my projects, please subscribe.